What's up, everybody? How you guys doing? Welcome to J Rich Fits Lifestyle and Health Coaching Corner. We are on episode four now. Today, we're going to talk about how eating healthy will change your life for the better. So, it's not all about just working out. It's also about eating healthy, working the inside out. So most of the time, people go outside first, where they think, oh, I'll lift, and I'll look great, and all that stuff. But that isn't the true meaning of health. You have to go inside to outside. So that means I have to clean and cleanse out the inside of my body, because once the inside is working well, then that gives me the energy, and it gives me the function for my outsides to work well. So we're going to be talking about that today. And uh, to begin with, first question, how to start. So same thing with fitness, how to start. It's the same thing with diet, how to start. This is where you got to start slow. Don't eat really bad and then go to a healthy lifestyle right off the bat. You got to kind of slowly get into it because what ends up happening is uh your body will kind of go into a shock if you ever 180 anything your body goes in shock so when i was in college we did case studies on uh drug addicts and with drug addicts you can't go from doing hardcore drugs to not doing hardcore drugs because your body will go into a state of shock you could die you can have really bad internal injuries, external injuries, all that good stuff. So what they do is it's called a weaning process to where they microdose until they can finally get off of the drugs and they go through the withdrawal syndromes and everything like that. Your body does the same thing when it comes to what you're eating, but just in a less dramatic stage because you're not addicted to food the same way drug addicts are addicted to drugs or hopefully you're not addicted to food that way. Uh, because it works like that. So you want to wean yourself into a healthier diet. So you go from eating really bad, then you incorporate good things, and then you start going away from the bad things, and then it starts changing like this. And your body will do it the same way because when you make these changes, your body has no idea. Your body and brain don't work the same way. Your brain can tell you, hey, listen, here's what we're doing. We're going to make this change, and that's cool. But your body is a machine. Your brain is a think tank. Your body kind of just runs on a rhythm. So when you start breaking that rhythm, uh, it doesn't react the same way. So it'll hold on to everything. So the second you make this big jump and it doesn't have the sugar the same way it's getting or it doesn't have the carbs the same way it's getting, whatever it does go in your system, it'll hold. And that's why I tell everybody, especially if you're working out, you're dieting, give it two solid weeks. Nothing will happen in those two weeks. You won't lose as much weight. You're not going to feel the best right away, but if you can get through that two-week struggle, then uh, everything will just shoot off. After those two weeks, all this weight comes off. You start feeling better. You start looking better. It's a two-week push when it comes to health and fitness, and especially with your diet, and especially making that slow change. And then when you make that slow change, too, your body adapts to what you're eating as well, so it'll enjoy it more. So when you make this slow transition... You'll start enjoying healthier foods and you'll start feeling a lot better. And then when you go back to eating shitty food, it tastes horrible. Me, myself, and not to like be Mr. Health Guy because I'm not as healthy when it comes to eating as people believe I am. But I don't really eat fast food. I don't go to McDonald's. I don't go to Jack and Box. I don't go in and out. Uh, these are just things I don't eat. And on occasion when it is presented in front of me and I'll eat like a chicken finger or a chicken nugget or something, I feel sick as fuck. And I will watch my boy, who is a McDonald's savant, he will eat it by the droves, and I cannot do it. And But his body so used to it, if I were to give him one of my Jake's Shake smoothies, he might not feel so good after drinking that because his body's not used to the nutrients and the health that's going into it the same way I'm not used to the bullshit that he eats. So you have to slowly get into the process. Don't ever rush anything. I said it in... I think it was episode three or episode two. Uh, if you rush into something, you won't stick with it. Rushing into something never works when it comes to health, when it comes to a job, when it comes to marriage, when it comes to college decisions. If you ever rush into anything, it's not probably going to work out the way you want it to work out. So always methodically 
slow it all down, get it all going when it comes to that. And then, yeah, evaluate what you're doing and where you can make the changes. I'm not a big vegetable guy, and that is where the whole Jake Shakes is a company of mine. If anybody that's watching this says no, Jake Shakes is a company of mine that I just started a couple months ago, and it is a healthier alternative to breakfast, and it's a, a vegetable fruit smoothie that you drink, and it gives you this good energy, and I have all these like ingredients and powders that I put into them. And uh, that is my way. I don't like vegetables. I don't, I'm not a big vegetable guy. So years ago, I said, okay, well, I'm going to put in this and I'll drink them. My body has felt amazing since doing this. I don't get sick. Uh, I feel strong. I feel like I got energy. I don't feel my age. I'm 31 and I feel like I'm 24. So find ways to incorporate health into your diet. And enjoy it too, because if you don't enjoy it, then you won't do it. Anytime you're not really enjoying something for a length of the period of time, you're probably gonna stop doing it. So find things you enjoy doing. I enjoy these smoothies, and it's easy for me. I just go quick and I'm out. I don't like breakfast, and that is my meal replacement, my breakfast. So it makes it really easy. So this is a big one the difference between a weight goal and actual health. So people get these mixed up all the time. They mix up weight loss and number with health. I don't believe in this at all. There are some people out there that you'll see and you will think, man, they're like a hundred and a woman, 115 pounds. Then you run up to her and you're like, excuse me, I know this is like really rude, but I want you to wait. And they're in amazing shape. So they're not shy to tell you. They'll be like, I'm 135, and you're like, no way, you look, it's always, that's the best way to look, is if somebody thinks you're lighter than you really are, you're doing amazing, because that just means you have a lot of condensed muscle in your body, you you look 170, but you're 195 pounds, or you look 115, and you're 135, that's the best way, and that all stems from diet and health, and really paying attention to what you're putting in your body, how much you're putting in your body, what you're doing with it outside of that because you can still be healthy and eat well and do all these things. But if you're not working out, you're not going to look probably the way you want to look. So they have to go hand in hand. Health and fitness both go together. Then, like I said, inside is what you're eating and what you're doing and how you're processing. Outside is the physical activity that you're doing. So don't get caught up on a weight goal necessarily because, like I said, in the couple episodes before this one. If you go to the city on a hot day and you see some of these homeless bum motherfuckers taking their shirts off, they have six packs. They look amazing, but they're not healthy at all. Like I said before, it's a cracking donuts diet and that's not the diet that you want to be on for longevity. And that's why we do this. It's not to look, just look good. It's longevity. You don't want to look good and die young because you're doing all the wrong things. No, you want to look great to your 50s and your 60s and your 70s to where people just never know what your age is because you're in better shape than them or you have better energy. So health and what you're putting in your system and what you're eating goes a long way compared to just going to the gym or just uh, fad dieting or something like that. Really do your homework and really know what is good for your body because everybody's body's different. That's what people forget too is your body's different. What works for one person, not is not going to always work for you. So don't worry about these diets and these fads because they're tailored to different people and different body sizes and different medical history and predisposure to allergies and everything like that. So you got to really understand your body, know what works for you, and then try that out. And if it does work for you, uh, spread it around. If people have questions then give it to them. And that's how you know you're really doing your thing is when you're at stage where people are coming up to you now asking what you're doing. This one is interesting. It's how much or often should you be eating? It really just depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to bulk 
And that's like a male term. Women hate this term. And I hate when women go, I don't want to lift heavy because I want to get bulky. Ladies, let me shut this down for you real quick. It takes long as fuck to get bulky. You will see it before it's ever happening. It's not like you pick up heavy weight and you lift one day and then you sneeze and go, and you just get huge. Shit doesn't happen that way. You will see bulky way before it hits you. So my advice is pick that fucking weight up and push yourself. Don't sit there and just keep lifting the same weights. If you're doing 12 reps and that 12th rep is just as easy as the first, get some heavier fucking weight because you're not doing anything for yourself. Anytime you're lifting, if it's three sets of 12, that 12th rep should be the hardest. If it's five sets of five, that fifth rep should be the hardest. When I say hardest, I mean almost impossible to get up with good form. Always make sure it's good form behind it, but that last rep should almost be, oh, my form almost broke because it was so hard. So when it comes to weight gain and weight loss and everything like that, here are the mathematical problems behind it. If I want to get bigger, I eat more, I lift heavier, that equals getting bigger. When I played college football, all they had us do is eat. So it was practice, eat, school, eat, practice, sleep, eat. It was just a continuing thing. And the reason for that is you need those calories. You need that extra fat to build muscle, to build volume. So if I'm trying to get bigger, most of the time it's men out there, but for men, if you're trying to bulk up, then here's what you do. You, I'm going to say double up your calories. That's a lot. So for me, when I was playing college football, we were eating 5,000 a day. That is not healthy for your body. That is not healthy for your heart, your arteries, everything like that. It's not sustainable. So I tell people, stay within like a 2,000 to 3,500, maybe 4,000, depending on how big you're trying to get, calorie diet. And then when you lift, heavy lifting, five sets of five, four sets of eight at max, six of three, something like that. But with that, you're maxing your muscles out. And it's all short, explosive movement. So you're going to create volume. You're going to get bigger. If we're going for a more lean cut look, then we're probably going to eat a little less. We're probably going to stay within the 1,500, 18, maybe 2,000 calorie, depending on how much cardio you're doing, everything like that. Because you want to make sure you are replenishing your body. Where don't have this output be so much more than the input. That's another math problem is if you want to lose weight, more output, less input equals weight loss. Weight gain, a little bit less output, more input, weight gain. So use those and think about it. But when it comes to thinning, here's what I tell people to do. Stay within that calorie of 1,500, 18, 2,000. And then lift lighter, but more explosive. So like I said, that's like three sets of 12, four sets of 10, something like that. Fit or Let's go three of 15. Don't go anything above that because you're not really doing anything. If I'm going 18 to 20 reps, you're just doing these burnouts. And I don't know, I never really got anything out of those. I always tell people stay within the three of 12, three of 15, four of 10, three of 10 medium weight but like i said that 10th rep that 12th rep whatever you're finishing on should be extremely hard and challenging people tend to go to the fucking gym and why do you go to the gym if you're not gonna challenge yourself why go to the gym and sit on a treadmill for an hour and a half and you burn the same calories if you would just sprint it seven minutes on the treadmill and you would save yourself so much fucking time or why go to the gym and either a talk too fucking much or B, bullshit with this light weight and think that you're doing something. Like, find a way to always challenge yourself because there's not somebody there always uh, asking you how many reps you did. There's not somebody always there checking to see if you're going heavier on the weight. It's you. You're the only one that can check on yourself, and you're the only one that will get better. Uh, nobody's going to help you, so focus on that type of shit. It's fucking frustrating, especially as a trainer. To always hear these excuses are always... Oh, why isn't this working? You said this would work. Well, what are you doing it? Oh, I know you're supposed to do it that way. What the fuck? I tell you to do it that way all the time. So don't make excuses and find it. But when it comes to the dieting side, bulking, 
more calories in your system, heavier lifting, trimming, less calories in your system, lighter weight, more reps. That would be the best way to go. And then this is a, a one I've been working on for like a year and a half, like the theory, but I do enjoy it and I do do it myself and I do feel better, is only eat when you're fucking hungry, especially in this country. We have the worst control. We eat so many more calories than we need to eat to function through our day. Unless you're a high-end athlete, you don't need anything over 2,500, 3,000 calories at the most. You're not doing enough. <laughs> if anything, you're like hurting yourself. Like You're putting too much in your body. You're not outputting. It's almost like constantly filling your car up with gas, but you're not driving that far. Eventually, the gas is going to start spilling out. And it's not like calories that spill out your ass or anything like that, but it'll, it'll spill out in unhealthy ways. Your, your skin will be bad or your breath stinks or you just, your body doesn't feel, you feel bloated. Like that's it spilling out of your body. So push these calories out of your system and uh, start doing more when it comes to all that stuff. <laughs> and th that's where my theory comes in. If you're not hungry, don't eat. I don't care if, if you think it's time to eat because your body's used to eating and, oh, it's lunchtime, I should be eating, or it's dinner time, it should be. If you're not hungry, don't eat. That will help burn excess calories and you'll lose weight that way. And then also it helps shrink your stomach. Our, especially in America, our stomachs are too big as it is. So the idea is when you get these hunger pains, when you don't feed them right away, your stomach starts getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Then you're used to eating smaller portions, which means less calories in your system, less volume, and you start losing weight and you start looking good. Simple stuff, easy stuff. There's no big tricks that you got to run around in. It's just you don't eat unless you're hungry and don't jump right away because you feel a little bit of a hunger pain because our bodies can only send so many pain signals that they can disguise them. So... Early stages of dehydration are disguised as a hunger pain. So your brain will send off into your body thinking that you're hungry, but you're actually really getting dehydrated. I tell everybody before you decide to eat something, drink some water, wait 10 minutes. And if you still feel hungry, then go eat something. But if you don't feel hungry after drinking that water after those 10 minutes, and it's because you're not hungry, it's because you're actually dehydrated. So don't worry about jumping and grabbing something and snacking. And we fucking snack too much. Stop with the fucking snack. If you're a snack, snack on something good. Eat a little bit of almonds or eat a banana or something like that. But stop snacking on all the bullshit. Especially if your everyday lifestyle isn't that active. They always say with the, the kids, it's 60 minutes of play a day. And that's for children. And their metabolism is fucking firing off. That means your big fat ass should get off the fucking ground and go two hours a day or go on a walk or skip a meal or do something like that because people are too scared to be real nowadays and tell people the harsh truth, but not me. I've always been that way. If you don't like the way you fucking look, do something about it because nobody's going to do it for you and it's only you that could do it. So get your ass up and go do, go on a jog, go on a walk, go on a bike ride, go on a hike. Get your heart pumping. Get the blood flowing. Get, be short of breath sometimes. Don't always be so comfortable because if you're comfortable, you're not successful. Any situation where you're comfortable, you're probably not going to be successful because you're just so used to it. So get uncomfortable and do something with yourself. What foods should you be eating? I always say the best way. And it depends. Like I said, I just use God because I'm... I believe um, in God and Jesus and all that type of stuff. But if God made it, it's probably going to be all right for you. So if it's man-made, stay the fuck away from it. If God made it, and I mean A to B, because everybody's going to be like, well, God made everything out here. Okay, fucking smart ass. I mean A to B. A banana comes from a tree. A is the tree. B, I pick it from the tree. So that's why it's mean when I say A to B. If it's something that is there, and I can grab it from A to B and then eat it without all this processing, all the bullshit in between that people put into it, then that's probably something you should be eating. If it's processed or 
if there's this A B C D E D uh, A B C D E F G fucking thing behind it, then uh, probably shouldn't be eating that. So make it simple for yourself. And the worst thing I hear, especially in lower income households, oh, it's so expensive. It's this. It, that's the laziest fucking ghetto shit I ever heard in my life. Because guess what? A two pound bag of carrots that I just bought at grocery outlet is a dollar ninety nine. Spinach and kale in these packs are two dollars and ninety nine cents. Meat there, the some of it's organic meat you can get for five six bucks. And then if you go like, and if you compare that to going to Jack in the Box or McDonald's or some shit, you're spending thirty on just the one meal. If you go to a grocery store, you're spending thirty, but that could feed you four fucking different times, five different times. So if you do the math, that's coming out to like six dollars, seven dollars a meal, compared to you just putting thirty on one. So I hate that ghetto ass or that ignorant ass excuse of, oh well. Organic shit's so expensive. Our health is so expensive. No, you're just fucking lazy and you're fat and you just want to go with all the bullshit and just do the lazy way. The lazy way is always going to be the out of shape fucking way. So don't do that. That's like one thing I can't stand. His health isn't that expensive. Bananas, a bushel of bananas are $1.99. A two pound bag of carrots are $1.99. Health is way cheaper than uh, all the bullshit that you're eating anyway. So... Don't get caught up in that hype train. You can go to a grocery store. You could look online, especially nowadays with your phone and everything being so at hand. You can cook anything. You just got to look the ingredients up and actually pay attention to them and you'll be absolutely fine. Start pushing yourself when it comes to cooking. Start pushing yourself when it comes to actually going and grocery shopping and not just being so lazy and having people drop shit off at your doorstep or stuff like that. Start uh, really honing in on your health because if you're not, nobody's going to do it for you. What kind of food should you avoid? I just, well, I just said it right there. The kind of food you should avoid is everything processed. Anything that man is stripping of all nutrients and putting their extra bullshit in to get you addicted to it. And so you can keep coming back and coming back and being a consumer. Sodas, chips, uh, ice cream, fast food, uh, all that bullshit. It's just, that, that's why if you ever notice on commercials, it's always chips. It's always sodas. It's always these billion dollar businesses. Because they know that you'll be addicted to them and it's all the bullshit. When was the last time you saw a carrot commercial? When was the last time you saw a kale commercial? You know why? Because they're good for you. And if you notice on TV when they're pumping you shit, it's not to help you out. It's to keep you trapped and make you a fucking sheep in this huge herd where you should be a wolf. And you should understand that, no, I'm going to go eat for myself. I'm going to go fend for myself. And I'm not going to be in this uh, pen ready to get my head chopped off and get served up to everybody else the way that they serve us with the bullshit of the commercials. So uh, pay attention. Pay attention to all that stuff. Uh, break away and really dive in. But stay away from all the bullshit food. And then what does it do for your every day? It gives you energy. So when you eat healthy, you have this energy, you have this motivation. It clears your brain. I think... All the other shit fogs you up and you start turning into a zombie. But I think that uh, the more you can eat healthy, the more your brain fires off, the more your body fires off, the more energy you have to where you can do things that most people are afraid to do. Fuck, look at me. I'm doing these things. You know how many people, A, have already, I mean, there's a lot of supportive people out there. But there's a lot of haters out there that don't like what I'm doing. But it's only because they're afraid or they're fogged up. For me, I can give a fuck what the fuck they think. I enjoy what I'm doing. I'm glad that I could help people out and uh, just give you a little bit of knowledge and spark some opinions. But I think that uh, when you start eating healthier, you start having a clearer mind, you start doing uh, positive things. And uh, I think it's a good tip to be on. So don't shy away from it. And with that being said, that's enough of me ranting and raving already. So... <laughs> Uh, thank you guys for listening. Like I said, I do these to spark conversations. I do these to, uh, say real things that a lot of people don't like, and it's a very PC nowadays and I'm not a PC human being. So I want to say things that kind of shake people up either in a good or bad way. And I want to hear your comments. I want to hear what you think. I want to hear topics that you'd like for me to talk about and, uh, give me your opinion. 
because uh, I think that everybody's living in such a scared time to not give opinions. And I think it's good to speak. It's healthy. You feel good after you talk about stuff like this. And remember, if you're somebody also that's looking for somebody to help you out, that this is the next avenue that I'm getting into. I'm getting into like lifestyle and health coaching. So I'm going to start posting about 15 minute consultations. If you need somebody to kind of help you through things, because I know that, uh, when it comes to psychiatry and everything like that, it gets very expensive. They can't really direct you in a certain way. Me, I've been doing this for so long. I've been doing this for nine years. Now I've helped people through divorces and deaths in the family and their own weight issues and their own health issues. So I've been doing this for nine years and now I want to transition into the direct help, uh, guiding people to the right path, telling them this is what you should be doing. This is what you shouldn't be doing because sometimes you need that. Sometimes you just need somebody that's an outside source to talk to that won't judge you. That will actually give you some real advice and you won't get screwed either. Like the when I do decide to do this, the prices that I'm going to do are very reasonable compared to how outrageous it is in other fields and kind of how they're taking advantage of you guys. So I want to be able to help and be there for people. So if you need my services, feel free to contact me on my Instagram, jrich dot fit uh you can reach out to me through email uh, contact information all that good stuff and also since this is a health like uh food one so when this is come down to like what you should be eating and everything like that i do also offer like i said earlier jake shakes which are my company product that are smoothies i have the morning one, which is an energy boost. So you skip breakfast. You just drink that. And it gives you this energy that pushes through, pushes you through the day. Me, myself, I've been taking them for three years. I've been sick in three years. I have incredible energy. I don't eat breakfast. I drink that. I go. I don't eat until 2 o'clock. I feel fine. It helps out and just keeps you very even and very uh, under control. So I do sell those. So if you do want to try them out get a hold of me like i said instagram all that good stuff but besides that y'all have a great day thank you very much for tuning in i appreciate all of you guys let's spark some conversations let's rattle some cages let's go from there so thank you very much have a great day i'll see you guys again next time peace